You're listening to Soap Sound Radio. We bring you streaming and live broadcasting from the capital. This is the El Arpa Podcast. Welcome back to the latest edition of the Adapter Podcast. I hope you are well, dear listener. Joining me in studio, i.e. the park bench today, is, as always, the lovely Maria. As always, referring to her loveliness and her being on a park bench. Both of those things are constants, at least in my view. Maria, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Even after that long-winded introduction? <laughs> yes, even better. Okay, well, uh, it's a new El Arpa podcast, new El Arpa uh, discussion. What are we talking about today? We're talking about a photography exhibition. That's new for us? Not really. You're right, you just jogged my memory. We've, we've, <laughs> we've gone to more uh, in the past. Okay, so what was the, the topic of this particular photography exhibition? Okay, it's the work of a certain photographer called Joseph Kodelka. Okay. And um, describe to me, if you will, his ur, his creative, uh, his creative hub. What was it? What was the? What's the essence of this man? <laughs> okay, well, the essence is manifold. Um, it's just got different uh, subjects. You know, they, they they range from you know abstractions to things like um, politics. Um, you know, people, even archaeology certain groups for example gypsies and so on so it's quite a variety of things it's very eclectic um, well first before we uh, go into the nitty gritty um, did you like it? I loved it very much okay why? Um, I just thought they were you know really beautiful images and quite um, insightful it sounds like uh, the exhibition was diffuse. I mean, there are a lot of things there. Archaeology, gypsies, uh, even as well uh, images from the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia mm-hmm. in the 50s. So, I mean, these are very distinctive things. Uh, so was it uh, strange to encounter all of these at the same time? Or was it something that you just went along with? I think they just, you know, flowed one into the other. They, they were serious of um, different, yeah, different series that I developed through through the years, um, out of interest. Um, for example, an an important part uh, was to do with all the countries that he traveled to, um, and this is because he um, he was basically deprived of his passport, um, and actually his passport said identity unknown. Um, so I think that kind of um, had an influence on, you know, he's trying to portray different identities and trying to find his own as well. Um, he also identified himself very much as a loner in the exhibition um, and that even though he made many friends in his travels with the gypsies and other people that he interviewed or photographed, uh, he still made a, a point of, of being apart uh, from from the community. Um, this identity that he forged for himself. Did you get a, a clear sense of this uh, looking at the different photographs, this um, sense of aloneness and uh, separation? I think you could get a very clear sense, yes, and I think that actually um, helped, uh, you know, the, the, the vision that, that he gave, like how how he saw uh, the images that, uh, that were in front of him. Um, yeah, I think it... it it definitely helped like, give this uh, personal view uh, that I think allowed you to see things in a, in a different way, maybe like in a, in a new light, you know, subjects that maybe before you'd, you'd overlooked. Well, yeah, I mean, there's uh, one of the earliest uh, photographs, or one of the ones you can see uh, from the outset, is of, um, of a motorbike race in Czechoslovakia, and um, it's, it's, it's shot from a distance, it's shot at, a, at an angle uh, which you know is it, it creates two effects. One that 
you can see it's it's almost like a human vision of it. You're not looking through a lens; you're looking through somebody's eyes because that's how we see things. You know, if we're walking on uneven earth or, or whatever, you know, we see things in a uneven way or or, or whatever. Um, and also, you do get a sense of his separation from from that scene because he is standing at a distance from it. And it's one of my favorite pictures in the exhibition because. Uh, we've been to a few exhibitions where the photography or the art has been a little bit abstract. I think this is abstract photography in a way because you're seeing things uh, from different angles. But because it's it's grounded in something that's that's very relatable and very human, I think uh, that adds to the effect um, the the choice of he made in, in 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 how to shoot the photo. I think because there's another photo as well of a, uh, in the Gypsy series um, where he's looking at uh, Gypsy mothers and their children. And left of the picture, there's a uh, a woman's arse, basically. Uh, you know, so it just um, it's taken at a funny angle, an angle that you would see if you were sitting down with them as well. And it's not a typical uh, photo of uh, you know, it's not a typical angle you would see in a lot of photographs, I think. So uh, he does have a very unique eye for a photographer, I think, and that's why there's an ex- he has an exhibition. I think people recognize that as well. I think people really tap into that. Yeah, I would agree. I think um, I think what's special about the pictures is that they're all very much about individual, um, you know, settings and circumstances and so on, and they're very focused on different countries and, and the specific situation of, of people in those countries, but at the same time, they're very universal images that, you well, know... Yeah, and even the, the pictures of the groups, uh, I mean, yeah, he does take group photographs, um, but again, uh, you can see that sense of separation even in those group photographs because uh, he's one picture set in Ireland of a group of old women uh, kind of chatting and having tea, but there's one who's distracted or looking away or looking quite angry, and she's removed from that group, you know. And even uh, other scenes, another one also in Ireland of a man sitting on what seems to be a hospital trolley, a big Virgin Mary or some religious epithet, and there's a boy who could possibly be a, a holy. You know, a part of some holy order, a uh, communion boy or whatever, and um, you know, again, you know, even though they're together in that photograph and, and there's something happening, there's a strange static element to the photographs where even the people in the photographs when they're with other people seem to be, uh, you know, removed from the situation themselves, and you know, we're the ones who are supposed to be removed from it because we're looking at it in an exhibition hall, but even those in the picture seem removed from, from what's happening around them, so I think... Um, it's it's I don't know how he captures it. It's a very subtle thing, but if it's very subtle, uh, you know, you don't know why a picture is great. You just kind of feel it, and that's the impression I got from from looking at these photographs. I think that's definitely right. Uh, something magical about it is that you know the pictures that uh, the pictures, sorry, that feature different people mm, that you can tell, you know, that he's focused on not the most obvious thing, but but actually like different different reactions from from different people and the way that uh, they interact with with each other um, and it's the interaction with the environment which I think is um, um, kind of he's a, a, a huge element in his pictures because uh, there's another series within the exhibition which is of, of walls because he grew up behind the, the Berlin Wall behind the Iron Curtain and he uh, photographed walls and uh, how imposing they can be on the landscape, um, both physically and I suppose mentally as well. Uh, and again, I mean, this is the starkest reminder, I think, or the, the most dramatic manifestation of his view of the world or his choices in the world or, well, choices to a certain extent, but also something that's been opposed, imposed upon him uh, by being born in, in a country that was under Soviet occupation at the time. Uh, but there is one series where there is a slight departure from this because his pictures uh, of Czechoslovakia when the Russians invade are quite dynamic they're quite intense um, and they're quite action filled you know it's it's uh, so I think there maybe is a, another beat uh, in his in his in his voice you know when uh, when you're looking at those photographs what do you think no I think you're right I think there's quite a contrast between these photos which are almost like photojournalism but at the same time you know they're given sort of like an an epic you know thing to to them um and all the other photos which are kind of like atemporal i think it just could be could be anywhere anytime exactly is there a sadness in that 
I think there's I think there kind of is uh, to 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 a point. I don't know. On like on the one hand, you kind of you can lose yourself in 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 the picture, uh, you know, and feel some sort of like uh, you know solace or something <laughs> of the kind. But uh, but at the same time, yeah, I guess there's there's a bit of a of a sadness of a, of a gone moment. I would have thought. Yeah, it's it's a it's a contradiction really, uh, because the beauty of these pictures is that we can relate to them, but also they're a testament to a man who's exiled himself um, quite consciously from from the world, you know, uh, a world that he yet has committed himself to to capture in photographs, you know. So there is a interesting contradiction running through the exhibition, and it really reflects the man who is behind the camera. Uh, what also ref- uh, kind of captured my interest was that he, he took thousands of photos, hundreds of photos, and very few actually made it um, onto the exhibition halls, you know, so uh, it would be nice to learn more maybe about how he um, he uh, kind of made a selection process, which isn't the fault of the exhibition center, I mean, it's something that you can do in your own time. So now for our awesome musical interlude, we shall be back quite shortly with part two. Welcome back, one and all, to part two of the show. You lucky listeners, you sit around for the end of the show. So, uh, what do we have to inform our listeners of in this part of the show, Maria? Of what we're going to do next week. Exactly, yes. So, what are we doing next week? We don't know. We do remember the, oh, uh, <laughs> the uh, Charlie, 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 Charlie. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. yeah, just messing. No, I don't remember. What is it then? It's about uh, silent movies. Exactly. Well, not just silent movies, but the early movies of Charlie Chaplin and uh, Buster Keaton uh, because uh, they're, they're interesting. And Charlie Chaplin is such an influ- influential person uh, in, in area cinema history. Yet, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, I love cinema, but I've never really learned that much about him. What about you? Have you ever learned anything about Charlie Chaplin? Ah, uh, well, not, you know, just the usual trivia about... Uh, you know, Hitler and all these things. Uh, well, presumably you've seen that speech from the great dictator that everybody quotes uh, mm-hmm. ad nauseum. So that has been ruined through repetition, I think, a little bit. But um, there are other scenes in the great dictator, for example, um, that are quite funny. And also as well, his later movies took on a great social message. Uh, Freud, who uh, I'm not a big fan of, I don't think you are either. <laughs> not at all. Exactly. He uh, felt that those political messages were as a result of uh, his poor childhood and how he wa- wa- and because of his poverty and his uh, well exactly poverty uh, he, uh, his movies had a social message about you know, that's why he had the character to tramp and all that but you don't need to be a psychologist or a psychoanalyst or a Freud to, to make that kind of connection so we won't be making those lazy connections next week we'll be doing proper ingenious things in, in depth analysis exactly yeah. so this is Enda from the Alarpa studio um, saying bye bye and Maria saying bye Okay, see you next... Well, talk to you next week. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Subsound Radio. We bring you streaming and live broadcasting from the capital. This is the Alarpa Podcast.